Hi there, <coughs> I'm Black Bright and I am a blogger. Um, so if you like my channel, please subscribe, share and do all those kind of things that you other bloggers tell us to do. Yeah, basically, um, I came across a BBC article, well, an article done by the BBC, and it's talking about what's going to happen post post Brexit. Now, apparently it's supposed to be the biggest shakeup of immigration policy for over 40 years. Now, the reason why I said that in the title, that it, the immigration um, legislation is for ignorant um, foreigners, is not to be insulting, but it depends on people who assume that everything is as it is written. You know, everything is the way it's forecast, promoted, that kind of thing. For some reason, Britain has got a very good reputation. Um, when you think about the Windrush and they brought them over here and they welcomed them at the boats and they made it look like they was all going to get lovely jobs and all that kind of stuff. And when they came here, they faced really difficult situation. Racism was rampant. And they didn't expect that because that is not what was advertised. Similarly, when they're talking about the new immigration policy post Brexit, they're making it look like it's easy to come in and, you know, work in the UK, you know, come whether you come in as a student, whatever you do, the threshold is only 30,000 as though 30,000 is nothing. But there's no comparison for people who do not live in the country. If you don't live in the country, you're going to think 30,000 is a lot of money. When I was working in the States over, let me see, how long have I been here now? Well, it must be about 17 years. I was on $54,000 in the States. That's, look how long ago that was. So for people who don't know, how much, what 30,000 is in the UK, they can think, oh, it's, it's, a, it's nothing, it's buttons, it's nothing. It's easy to achieve, get a job for 30,000. Not realizing that even, okay, they're talking about they want skilled workers, whether they're coming into the NHS or wherever they're going. You have to remember that to get 30,000, you'd have to be like, not like a director, but you have to be like a line manager and pretty high up. You'd have to be earn, you'd have to be like a band six. And the people coming over here wouldn't come in at that level. I'm going to put a link in. It's from the Agenda of Change and it gives all the NHS pay scales for 2019 to 2020. So you can get a rough idea if you are planning or thinking about coming to the UK what you can expect to get for the money because there's no way you're going to come in and get 30 grand 30 grand is considered is considered a very very good salary in the kind of sectors that people from abroad would expect to come over and get so apparently this um, reduction in net migration what that's supposed to be is, it's supposed to, there's supposed to be a balance with those going out and those coming in. But what's happening is they're kicking a lot out. They're preventing people from coming in. They're preventing people from coming in through policies like this, through saying, OK, if you if you don't have if you don't meet the 30,000 threshold, you cannot come in to the country. That's basically what they're saying. OK, they can make it nice and they can word it up and pretty it all up. But that's basically what they're saying. Um, the scheme is designed to fill vacancies in sectors such as construction and social care, which are heavily dependent on EU labour. Now, which construction worker or social worker is going to be getting 30 grand? So I don't see how the scheme can be designed for that. And these are the type of people who would be coming in from the EU or from abroad, from African nations, believing after they paid these big fees that they're going to be able to get 
that kind of salary. They're going to believe they can command that kind of salary because 30 grand doesn't appear that to be that much. At the moment, the, um, the, low, the lowest amount you can get per hour is £8.23. I think it went up in April. But, you know, that is pittance. It's good for those people who are not earning much. But now, because the rate is so high, employers can't even afford to pay it. So what is the point? What is the point of increasing the lowest wage if employers can't afford to pay it? What is the point of setting a 30,000 threshold if employers cannot afford to pay, pay that? And the thing is with the NHS, it's a set pay scale. It's not like they can bump it and adjust it. They can't. It's not like the private sector. They can barter and, you know, you can, well, they used to be able to negotiate. I don't know if they can do it now. I haven't worked for the private sector for years. But the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, maybe top, you know, maybe executives, they might start at 30,000. But the, the thing is, is that what the UK should be saying is that, look, we don't want anybody in the country who cannot command 30,000 and give them examples of what kind of jobs pay 30,000. But instead, they're making it look attractive to like students who might have a six month or year visa who they've paid an arm and a leg for. And then not tell them that it'd be practically impossible for you to get a job for 30,000 at the end of it. That's my beef. I don't like people trying to make things look one way when they're actually another. I don't like that. And so I have to speak out on this because a lot of people could be entrapped. They could use all their money and they, could, you know, it's not an investment. Coming to the UK is not an investment unless, of course, you've got money. You've got money to burn by all means. The government will welcome you. Those are the kind of people that the UK wants. But if you're struggling, and you think UK is going to give you a break. It's not the answer. It's not going to give you a break. And worse, if you come over here and try to overstay or try to change your visa status or think you can come over here and marry someone and all that kind of thing that used to go on back in the day, you won't be able to do it. You're going to come over here. You're going to be skint and you're not going to be able to go get a job and you're going to go back with your tail between your legs. That's the fact of the matter. So there is a, um, I'm not even going to put the, the white paper in because it's 168 pages. You're not going to read it. I'm not going to read it. So I, all I did, I extracted what I could from the BBC article and um, Hopefully it gives you an idea. And if I put in the agenda for change rates, that will help you know what kind of jobs are for what kind of money. Just want to make sure that. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure that there's nothing I'm really missing. But to be honest, it just like they're stealing people's money. To you, But they can't say you're stealing it because they're telling you up front. It's just that if you haven't done your homework and you're not, you know, you don't know the country well enough, you, re you really have to research these days. There's no excuse for ignorance. And they've got a saying that um, lack of knowledge is no excuse. And it isn't these days. You can go on site and you can do anything. You can search anything. What is the um, going rate for anything? in the UK? What is the cost of living in the UK? You can do that. You can do all your research and try to look at up legislations and take your time and read them if you can, because it's really important. It's fine me coming and telling you stuff on a very superficial level, but I'm missing out a lot of stuff because I haven't got the time to read the details. I don't get paid for what I'm doing. And even if I did, I don't like reading all those complicated pages and pages and pages. My interest wanes after a couple of pages. And I'm sure it would for a lot of you, too, because the language is superfluous. It's designed deliberately to derail people and confuse people. It's all deliberate. 
So what I'm saying is don't fall into this net that they're waiting for. They love the money. I think they're making over two billion a year on students coming over and, you know, passports and all this immigration stuff. They're making a buck. So they want people to come over. They want people to apply for naturalization. They want people to apply for um, limited leave to remain or indefinite leave to remain. And they want people to apply for families. It doesn't mean you're going to get it, but they're going to take your money and then they'll probably find any excuse not to approve it. So be careful what you're doing with your money. Invest wisely. Do your homework. That's all I'm saying, because ignorant isn't bliss in this occasion. That's all for now.